Hi there, I'm Rainer from 4Audio and today I'm going to show you how to make a two-channel active crossover with linear phase FIR filtering with uh, look-ahead peak limiters, RMS limiters, all this in five minutes. I'm going to use our DSP plate amplifiers which you see here. We have a lot of more models but I show you only three. I'm going to use the PPA1002 which is a Pascal module with 1000 watts in total, 500 watts per channel. We have our own DSP, we have a touch panel, a USB connector and analog and digital input and optional Dante input. And I'm going to show you now how to configure this with our software. First let me introduce the loudspeakers that we're going to use. So we made measurements of the woofer and the tweeter here and now I'm using our software which I already started and open the developer window. I'm not going to explain all settings so I'm just going through it very quickly so you get a glance of how easy it is to operate. We will have more videos which explain all settings in detail but for now this should be, should be enough. First we select the module, model which is the PVA1002. Uh, we use it in single ended configuration and we want both outputs of it to have the same input so we select analog dual range conversion for example. We configure our speakers um, so for output 1 and output 2 we upload our measurements that I showed you before so we load the low frequency driver in output 1 we load the high frequency driver in output 2 we get some warning here, it's turning yellow, the microphone distance is not correct, so it detected about 2 meters, and I know that it's true because we measured it at 2 meters, so I fix it here. And now we are going to the crossover section. We select FIR with speaker compensation here, that is what we want to do, and we see that we have all kinds of settings, but the first point is always to have a look at the measurements. So I activate the measurement curves here. I see the amplitude, I see the phase and I see the group delay. And uh, I need to define the target SPL first and let's have a look. 100 decibel, well, well it's fine. We leave it at 100 decibel. The latency, uh, 10 milliseconds, we can leave it for now and change it later. Uh, the crossover frequency, maybe 1600 Hz is a good value, so we can enter them in each output individually or we can lock the settings here, so both outputs will take the settings that we enter here. 1600 Hz, link with Riley, let's say 36 decibel per octave. We see the target responses here that we want to have, so this is our ideal result. Um, the FIR coefficients in total we have 2048 and we need to split them in the two out, between the two outputs. In output 1 the predefined setting is 1536 and output 2 is 512. Since we need more coefficients in the, for the woofer this is fine, we can leave it. Um, and the low cutoff frequency here is 90 Hz pre-configured Let's see, 90 Hz might be okay for this driver, so we leave it as well. Now we can have a look at the output for output 1. The total output for output 1 is the multiplication of the measurement here, the uh, crossover target responses and the FIR loudspeaker equalization. So let's have a look and we see that it looks quite good, I would say. For output 2 we do the same, also quite nice, and we can have a look at the total output which is the sum of output 1 and output 2, therefore it might be good to disable these two curves again, so we see the total result of the crossover and our loudspeaker, and we can see that it is nice. So let's have a look at the phase response. From 20 hertz, kilohertz down to 100 hertz, it's 
flat. So it's a linear phase. You can see the, the group delay is 10 milliseconds here. Maybe we can try to reduce the latency a little. And we can see what happens. The group delay is going down to 8 milliseconds. And we can see in the amplitude at low frequencies that it gets a little ugly here. So maybe let's stay at 8 milliseconds. And maybe we can optimize this a little more. So we can change the configuration to custom, which means that we get some more switches, which are maybe not for the beginner, but we can use them here. And in output one, we're going to use a, a numerical optimizer, which tries to make it a little better here. And we can see that it's uh, quite nice. It's got more flat and better at very low frequencies. And still we can see down to 100 hertz a very nice um, phase response and group delay. So basically for our uh, crossover, we're finished. We could add some master EQs here to maybe make some optimizations here, but I, I, I would say it's, it's okay for now. Um, we need to define the limiters for both speakers. So for the woofer, we have a speaker impedance of 8 ohms. The amplifier gain and power and, and the uh, duck output voltage is predefined by our, by our hardware. We cannot change it. So we just activate the limiter here and set the peak limiter threshold to 200 watts, the RMS limiter threshold to 50 watts, and the time constant to 200 seconds. For output 2, it's 8 ohms as well. We activate the limiter. Let's look up the values for it. It's 60 watt peak, 15 watt RMS, and 25 seconds time constant. Okay, so basically we're finished. We can store this preset in a meaningful name. We could make more presets, try to change the latency or optimize something, add EQs, uh, master EQs or room EQs or whatever. But for sake of shortness and your time, I would stop here. We will have more videos to come which explain all the details and uh, stay tuned. Visit our website at foraudio.com, write us an email and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.